Remember that for questions or comments, you can email me at achardwick at gmail.com. Last week, we completed the fifth scene, the seven plagues. This showed the judgment of those who worshiped the beast and had the mark of the beast. This week, another character, the great prostitute or the great city, Babylon, is being punished in the sixth scene. Um, I did also tweak my running outline of Revelation, made some changes to what we did previously in the outline. So you might want to review the outline as well. Um, at this time, read, read or listen to Revelation 17. And we'll begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the chance again to look at your word. Uh, we pray that you would help us to uh, think clearly about it, and that your Holy Spirit would teach us what you would have us to know, um, that we would apply these truths to our lives and love others and love you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. It is difficult to say what the prostitute is. I think that the world is the best way to characterize her, the world system organized without God, and what John tells us not to love in 1 John. Dr. Godfrey thinks that the prostitute rep represents political power and that the beast that she is on represents false religion that attacks the church. It does seem from Revelation that the government is driven by false beliefs and false religions to persecute Christians. In Revelation 17, 1, the great prostitute is said to sit on many waters. This refers to the many people affected by this prostitute. In verse 2, we see that important people, as well as those in love with this world, are affected by the prostitute. People from all walks of life love the world. In verse 3, she is sitting on a scarlet beast in the desert. Remember that the dragon was red. This beast that she is on is similar to the um, beast out of the sea that we read about before in Revelation 13. He has the correct number of heads and crowns. The beast was said to be covered with blasphemous names compared to the beast from the sea who had the name on each of the crowns. This seems to be the worst of the beasts, the beast from the abyss. The scarlet cover, color of this beast seems to indicate the satanic influence on this beast, the Antichrist and his kingdom. The setting in the desert is fitting as the church had fled to the wilderness. The beast is persecuting the church. In verse 4, describes the dress of the prostitute. It is very lavish and excessive. The irony is the clash between the filth that is in her golden cup and the way she presents herself. The world appears to be very glamorous in ads on TV, but is full of wickedness. The lavishness and excessive accumulation of wealth in the world is not pleasing to God. The golden cup full of abominations is a reference to, to Jeremiah 51.7, where Babylon has the nations drink of her wine and get drunk. Verse 2 mentions the madness or intoxication that comes from drinking the wine of this new Babylon. This prostitute is said to be the mother of prostitutes and the world's abominations. Prostitution is an abominable thing. Women are often tricked into working as prostitutes. They may be kidnapped, and some are told they will be getting a better job than what they have. The work is very hard on the body due to sexually transmitted diseases, stress, and drug use, and workers who do not escape this often die very young. They are kept in this line of work through pain and in intimidation. The women involved in it are not so much the beneficiaries of it, as the pimps that find their clients. The pimps do not care about the effects of what they are doing on marriages uh, they are affecting or the health of those who use these prostitutes. 
The abominations that have their source in the great prostitute include murders and stealings. Um, in these things, there is no concern for the law of God, which clearly says that these things are wrong in the Ten Commandments. Just like the pimp before, those who do, do these things are only concerned about themselves and the advantage that they may get from murdering someone or from acquiring property that is not theirs. The prostitute is said to be Babylon, reminding us of this city, but also of similar cities in the past, such as Sodom and Gomorrah and Tyre. Revelation 17.6 says that the prostitute is drunk with the blood of the saints, those who are martyred for Jesus. She has been involved in a lot of persecution in order to get drunk with this blood. When those in power espouse the principles of the world, whether the politician or religious leaders, they persecute and kill Christians partly to try to continue what they're doing, as Christians will not go along with their plans. Sometimes the persecution may be because of hatred. The world hates Christ and thus hates his followers. In verse 7, the angels, um, or the angel rather, one of the seven who had the plagues, told John uh, that he would explain the mystery of the woman and the beast. In verse 8, the beast was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. In verse 10, we find that there are seven kings or kingdoms represented by the seven heads. The word is literally kings, but in the explanation of the vision in Daniel 7, we see in verse 23 that kingdom is used to describe the meaning. So the Bible seems to allow for this interpretation. The beast is said to be of the seven. It is hard to explain how he could be a king and be presently dead and come back to life. Certainly a kingdom could appear to no longer be a world power and could come back to power. It has been suggested that Babylon is the literal city that is rebuilt. However, the prophecies from Isaiah and Jeremiah regarding Babylon would seem to contradict this uh, as they indicated that it would not be rebuilt. It is certainly possible that some other worldwide empire which is not a worldwide empire now, such as Greece, could again become a worldwide power. The beast being of the seven may mean that it has characteristics like the seven, so it is not necessarily one of the original kingdoms. The coming back to life could be referred, referring to the form of the beast involved in severe persecution of believers. This form was present in the days of Antiochus Epiphanes, and in the days of Nero and Titus, and would be present in the future. It would seem that an actual rebuilding of Babylon is not what is in mind. In verse 7, the seven heads are referred to as seven mountains. Rome was well known for being built on seven hills, and is one manifestation of the beast that John is likely referring to here. And I did look up that word mountain and I saw that um, the Mount of Olives is called a mountain. It's actually a fairly small mountain. Um, so I think that mountain and hill are fairly similar. Um, those happy with the world system will marvel at the beast. The corruption and wickedness does not bother them so much. Verse 10 refers to seven kingdoms. Um, the question is, is the seven to be taken literally or symbolically? One can readily come up with five worldwide kingdoms before the one, before the one present when the book was written, uh, such as Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persian Kingdom, and Greece, or six worldwide kingdoms, um, Babel, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, and Greece, and the one when the book was written, which is Rome, and the one uh, uh, and one is to come, unclear, but consider the United States with it being a sup world superpower, with the dollar as a worldwide currency and English as a worldwide language. 
One could say that the United States does not seem to fit as it doesn't seem to be as wicked as the other examples. But we can see a lot of wickedness in the United States as well with all the abortions, murders, robberies, and wars. So even though our nation is based on some great principles, which can also be found in some of the worldwide empires before the United States, there is great wickedness in our nation. It is true that we do not see the worship of leaders or the government deliberately killing Christians at this point, but we do see persecution of Christians by the government in some areas of our nation. Or could it refer to a future worldwide empire such as uh, China when it's talking about this um, other nation? In any event, if the seven nations are literal, it would seem that the beast could be from any of the seven empires except the one that existed at the time of John, the Roman Empire, and the seventh empire as the beast would replace the seventh empire. Or could it be similar to to the seven kingdoms, since it says he is of the seven, uh, rather than one of the kingdoms coming into prominence again. The number seven could also be taken figuratively related to a curse in this case due to the wickedness of the empires. The number five could refer to half of the complete number of kings, with 10 usually being a number of completeness, so five would be about half of them. This interpretation would allow for more than one empire after Rome and could include things like the British Empire, the United States, Russia, and China, and potentially more to come, such as a Muslim caliphate. This would still seem to exclude the empire at the time of John, the Roman Empire, and the empire right before the Antichrist as being the Antichrist's empire or being of the seven could indicate a similarity to, to all of the seven. In Revelation 17, 12, the ten horns on the beast are said to be ten kings that have authority for a short time with the beast. The short time seems to indicate that the Antichrist's empire will be for just a short time as opposed to a long time. In view of the wickedness of this empire, it is good that the time will be short. It does say that they have not yet received a kingdom, so they were not in power at the time of John's writing of Revelation, these, these ten kings. It could potentially be ten literal kings, or ten could indicate completeness, the complete number of rulers or nations that support and rule with the beast. Um, these nations are united in three ways. In verse 13, they are united in supporting the beast. As part of this, in verse 14, they are united against the lamb and his followers. The third way in which they are united is that they will hate the prostitute. This, world's, this would seem um, counterintuitive because the prostitute and the beast have been linked to one another. Uh, governments have generally gotten along well with the world and materialism as it helps with payment of taxes. But we see forces at work in the world today that are against the world system. In particular, some Muslims refer to America as the great Satan. They would like to see the downfall of America and the Western world. Communism, which we see at work in our own country now and the riots in our cities. Marxism is at the heart of what the Black Lives Matter movement is about. Uh, this, this communism would like to do away with America and Western civilization. Some of our large cities are presently being destroyed by looting and burning. Globalists see the United States as standing in the way of setting up a one world government. The irony in this is that while destroying stores, uh, those who are doing this, uh, they're taking goods for themselves, showing that they're not completely against the world. Ultimately, we see in verse 17 that God put this desire into their hearts in order to fulfill his words. The world system is going to be punished. Revelation 17, 14 makes it clear who ultimately wins in this battle. The lamb wins. Those with him are called, chosen, and faithful. We as his followers have been called out of the world. 
We have been called to repentance. We have been chosen before the foundation of the world. Since God is at work in us through his spirit, we are faithful. Verse 15 makes it clear that the world system affects people all over the world. In verse 16, it mentions that they will burn Babylon with fire. Chapter 18 also seems to use the illustration of smoke rising from Babylon as the smoke from a conquered city that is being burned. In verse 18, the woman is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. In John's time, this was Rome, and in our time, it has been Washington, D.C. We see that many in the government follow the ways of the world. It is not clear where we may see this great city next. At this time, read chapter 18 of Revelation, or listen to it, um, which is available um, at the YouTube. In chapter 18, we see in verse 2 a great angel announcing the fall of Babylon the Great, which from verse 17, verse 5, it is another way of referring to the great harlot. Verse 3 says that all the nations have drunk of the maddening, maddening wine of her adulteries. Uh, this includes the upper class and the middle class in verse 3, as well as the lower class in verse 17. The kings of the earth have committed adultery with her. One can think of spiritual adultery, putting other things such as power and money above God. One can also think of literal adultery and sexual promiscuity. We've recently seen the death of Jeffrey Epstein. Many politicians apparently fell into sexual temptation through him and those working for him. We also see that the merchants of the earth grew rich from the excessive luxuries of Babylon. This reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50 says this about Sodom. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had arrogance, abundant food, and careless ease, but she did not help the poor and the needy. Thus they were haughty and committed abominations before me. Therefore I have removed them when I removed them when I saw it. James speaks about the rich in James 5, 3 through 4. He speaks of them hoarding their wealth and the wages that they have failed to pay for those who worked for them. Amos speaks of doing things just for money and trampling on the poor. And we can see Amos 2, 6 and 7. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke its punishment. Because they sell the righteous for money and the needy for a pair of sandals. These also pant after the very dust of the earth on the head of the helpless. Also turn aside the way of the humble. And a man and his father resort, resort to the same girl in order to profane my holy name. He also talks about excessive houses and decoration in the, of the houses in uh, Amos 3.15. Riches, just for the sake of riches, is idolatry. And not paying workers fairly does not please God. Capital capitalism has led to great prosperity in our country. But part of the prosperity that some have is due to injustice. Those who are blessed financially need to have concern for justice and the poor. As well as everyone else in society. Too often money is used to subvert justice. Revelation calls on God's people to come out of Babylon so as not to receive the judgment coming upon her. The Israelites were told to come out of Babylon in the past for the same reason. Isaiah 52, 11, Jeremiah 50, verses 8 through 10, and Jeremiah 51, 45 talk about leaving Babylon so as not to be punished. Isaiah 52, 11, Depart, depart, go out from there, touch nothing unclean, go out of the midst of her, purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. 
Jeremiah chapter 50. Wander away from the midst of Babylon and go forth from the land of the Chaldeans. Be also like male goats at the head of the flock. For behold, I'm going to arouse and bring against Babylon a horde of great nations from the land of the north, and they will draw up their battle lines against her. From there she will be taken captive. Their arrows will be like an expert warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea will become plunder, and all who plunder her will have enough, declares the Lord. Then Jeremiah 51, 45. Come forth from her midst, my people, and each of you save yourselves from the fierce anger of the Lord. We should be in the world, but not of it, so that we are not judged along with the world. Second Corinthians, after quoting from Isaiah, says in Second Corinthians 7, verse 1, Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This applies to leaving churches that have strayed from the truth. A number of churches, uh, um, including uh, Grace Fellowship uh, in Ballinger, were started partially by those who left churches which were no longer faithful to God's word. We should um, make sure that we're not hoarding up our treasures on earth. We should pay people who work for us in an appropriate manner. Um, we should not participate in por pornography, prostitution, fraud, stealing, looting, etc., even though those around us may be doing these things. The, pun the punishment on Babylon in Revelation 18, 6 is proportionate to the crime. They are paid back as they have done to others. The first clause explains that she is getting what she deserves. When the second clause refers to paying her double for her deeds, it means that the punishment matches the crime. Verse 7 talks about a like measure of torment and mourning as punishment for her glorification of herself and living luxuriously, which is again a punishment meet for the crime. John quotes from Isaiah 47, 7 and 47, 9, which show the pride of Babylon in the past. This new Babylon has the same kind of pride and the same fall. In uh, Revelation um, 18, 9, the kings of the earth, which ironically bring Babylon to ruin, are also mourning and weeping over the loss. From verse 10, her destruction comes about over a short period of time. In Revelation 18, 11, the merchants likewise mourn as no one buys their goods anymore. Luxurious living supports a lot of people who sell things to support this. It is interesting that at the bottom of the list of, of what is being sold are human souls. There is no concern about the welfare of others, just about oneself. If others are crushed for you to be able to get ahead, it shouldn't bother you according to the world system. The sailors in verse 18 see the smoke of her burning. Here the picture seems to be of a city that has been taken and is being burned to the ground. In verse 20, we see that we should rejoice in this. God has given us the judgment that we requested. Uh, verse 24 says that the blood of all the prophets and saints was found in Babylon. It would seem then that Babylon, the world, has existed during the whole time between the first and second coming of Christ and can be blamed for these martyrs. If Babylon is seen just as the capital city of the kingdom of the beast, it would not be responsible for all these deaths. Political power or religious power cannot be blamed for all these deaths although they contribute to them as they yield to the temptations uh, of the world. In verse 21, a great millstone is thrown into the sea. Jeremiah ends uh, with Jeremiah 51, 60 through 64, which again has this picture of a great millstone. So Jeremiah wrote in a single scroll all the calamity which would come upon Babylon. That is, all these words which had been written concerning Babylon. 
Then Jeremiah said to Sariah, as soon as you come to Babylon, then see that you read all these words aloud and say, you, O Lord, have promised concerning this place to cut it off so that there will be nothing dwelling in it, whether man or beast, but it will be a perpetual desolation. And as soon as you finish reading this scroll, you will tie a stone to it and throw it into the middle of the Euphrates and say, just so shall Babylon sink down and not rise again because of the calamity that I'm going to bring on her and they will become exhausted. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. So this would have been a familiar uh, picture to the um, to the readers of John's book, the end of Jeremiah, where Jeremiah was prophesying against the literal Babylon. And so similar to this literal Babylon uh, in this, in Revelation, you have this um, millstone, which is, of course, a very, very large stone used to grind uh, grain, which is thrown into the uh, sea and just sinking Babylon. Um, in Revelation, uh, this upper millstone being thrown in shows that there's no possibility of escaping this judgment. Hendrickson points out that the phrase, no more at all, occurs six times in verses 20 through 23. The number six seems to be associated with man, and man is being judged by God. No more at all shows the finality of the judgment.